<clears throat> All right, we're live. Welcome, everybody, to the Keto Show. I am not in live in Las Vegas, nor am I in a kitchen in uh, Stone Georgia. Mountain, Georgia, or in somewhere be around Salt Lake. But I am smoking bears, and I'm in the bear cave, and I have a studio audience. Yes. Oh, you know by the phone. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so today, uh, just want to say uh, hello to Grumpus on Fire and Trouble Int. ENT, how you doing? Um, you guys were early. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to be by myself tonight. Uh, you know, Tom's still rehabbing. Uh, the dude still got, uh, he's traveling a lot with, uh, with the wife and with work. So, and then, uh, Keto Mike had, a something came up with his brother-in-law. So, uh, just keep them all in your prayers. You know, life happens and we're just little pawns. We got to deal with it. So, but the, the, the theme or the topic for this week was going to be waffles. Which is good, because I've been kind of kicking some stuff around, but I haven't actually felt like doing it. And after last week's debacle with uh, what I thought was pancake mix, turned out it was sugar cookie mix. Yeah, I can tell you that was not a good thing. You said it was really good. Oh, it tasted wonderful. <laughs> the aftermath was not good. So, anyway, I, I kind of shied off of this stuff. But we're going to get into it today. Um, because I actually have a bag of pancake mix. I've had it in the pantry for a while. Been wanting to try it, but I'm kind of nervous because the last pancake keto mix I got was, what's up, Charlie? Was very almond flowery. So. See, and that's one thing that I find really strange. Like, like the, the certain um, sweeteners, they, they give you an aftertaste. You you can tell, and my I guess I just have, don't have a, as refined a palate as you because I cannot tell any different. I mean, I don't get an aftertaste. Well, and you don't like you like cilantro tastes like soap to you, right? It tastes delicious to me. So it's just a difference in the people. Um, I talk with Keto Mike, and he's like, "Oh, I love this allulose," and I was like, <gasps> "Nope." It gives me that cooling sensation um, that, that just, just bothers me. What was um, that 50-pound bag of sweetener that they had on sale at the store down here? That was straight urethritol. 50-pound bag for $5. Yeah, that is supposed to be a chemically made sweetener substitute, which is mainly used as bulk filler. So monk fruit, if you get straight monk fruit it'll cost you an arm and a leg for a little jar but if you go to the like wally world and you get where it says monk fruit sweetener you flip it on the back it says urethritol then monk fruit stevia is the same way unless you get the liquid drops where they're uh this concentrate right. so stevia is what i use at home so i try not to use any sweetener if i do it is coconut sugar which is not keto, but it is lower on the glycemic index for your diabetes. Doesn't make a difference. I it makes me feel like I'm doing something good for myself. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But anyway, this has um so in, in one third cup, and it, this is two thirds cup, this whole packet. Well, that doesn't sound right. No, it don't. Anyway. No, that's not right. But anyway, for one third cup of mix, it's 20 carbohydrates, 12 of its fiber, zero sugars, and zero or seven sugar alcohols, which I don't get into all that. And I don't get into the subtracting fibers and all that and right. the, the net carbs because my blood sugar doesn't know no different. So. But, uh, oh, nothing but love. What's going on, buddy? Um, so, anyway, I got that going on. 
Then I got this one that was floating around. I think it was on the old uh, face chat thing. Um, the old FB. And it was peanut butter in an egg. And I was like, really? So, hey, we're doing waffles. Why not try it? It should be easy to clean up if it's a failure. <laughs> we don't have failure. We have <laughs> learning experiences. And then another one I got, um, since Keto Mike's not here, he had gifted me some of these uh, protein powders. Uh, and this one here is a sweet tater pie. And it's 20 grams of protein. And it has a recipe on the back for pancakes. So if I cut a little bit of water out, it should be a wall. I think. Anyway, so that's what I got going on. That's what we're going to try to do. Master of Puppets, excellent record it was. Uh, so I'm rambling, uh, but that's what we got going on. So I guess I should... Oh, and because it's waffles, y'all know what time it is. The old Millennium Falcon. Right? But I also decided to break out the other ones. Which, let me get this plugged in. Because she's got to get good and hot. The other one I got, which was a gift from a, a, a lady I went to school with, high school with. She reached out to me one day, said she got something for me, and I, I hadn't talked to this girl in a long time, and this is what she gifted me. I've still got the box, right? Can you all see that? It's Darth Vader. It's Vader's helmet. <laughs> I've used it before. We're going to use it again. And then this was another awesome one that was a gift. Yes, Obi-Wan Invader Sword Fight. Check that out. That's going to be cool. So I have three different waffle makers, three different waffles, and hopefully enough brain cells to keep them all straight and get them going. If not, I've got a guy over here that's watching me. It's going to start throwing popcorn and tomatoes. Fortunately, I don't have either one. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Mikey, Keto Mike's in. Uh, sorry, folks, couldn't make it today. Sitting in the ER while they work on a brother-in-law. Banged up pretty bad. Man. Thoughts and prayers, brother. Thoughts and prayers. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to start out with, which one are you going to start with? Let's go ahead and start with the monk food. Okay, you're eager to try that one. I am. Do you need me to help anything? Do you need me to stir anything, or well, do you sure. have everything you need? I'm, I think we can we can find something for you to do. So, really, if you need any help, I'm here. I need about two thirds cup of this. I will need a teaspoon of well, why about that? Um, you can read the comments or whatever. That'd be cool. I don't know if you can read the comments. I'm sitting closer. There's a, you can bring the other chair around. Let's see. Two-thirds cup of that. So I'm glad I didn't do a... Whoa. We about put Rusty in right there with Mikey. Uh, good thing I, I, I decided to really look at this because I almost slipped this whole bag in there. That would have been a bad thing. As he turns the whole thing. Kids, all right. Oh, I need to read that. Um, let's see. So then, uh, Pickle said, "Ladies from high school, I saw that movie." Oh, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. So then it says one egg, and I did not bring the trash can. So we will.
I was sitting here chilling and relaxing, uh, talking to the wife, and completely forgot to get my trash bag ready. Y'all know about the garbage bowl. I mean, that's nothing new, right? What else we got going on there, Bubba? Um, quarter cup of water, vanilla, and teaspoon of oil. Mad Woods in. What's Bat, up, Terry? Bat's in. Bat 13. Uh, howdy, howdy. Boy, everybody came in. All right. Uh, how much water? Quarter cup of water. We're trying to figure this out. That's for sure. You know me and recipes, we sometimes we get along. Yeah, you know, pancakes and waffle mix, that's one thing that I never measure. I pour in the liquid until it has the consistency I want, and then I stop. But this is calling for oil, so I'm using olive oil. So it's it's calling for more than just water. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't ever do it. No, if I was trying it with something I've never used before, I would definitely follow a recipe. But when a, it doesn't, it's more than just water. Like a lot of the pancake mix is straight water. Right. You add straight water. That's what so, I use at home. Yeah. So that's why I, I just pour it till it's the right consistency. Which is fine. But then when you're adding all this other stuff. Yep. Oh, and shout out to our buddy Wes. I'm using his uh, vanilla. He's not in, obviously, but I ball a teaspoon. Pickle says olive oil for pancakes. Well, I don't have avocado, and I could have used soybean, but I that's not keto. Like it matters, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. If it's a flop, then you all know. The number one ingredient, the ingredients in this is number one is almond flour. So tapioca starch, sugar cane, fiber, pea protein, baking powder, sea salt, natural flavors, so monk fruit extract. I guess I could move this over. So that's the whole batter. I mean, it doesn't look too, too bad. So I, and I don't know if anybody's paid attention to uh, watching Disney Plus, but um, they are now in cahoots with Hulu. And so now on Disney Plus, you can watch The Big Lebowski. What is that, a sports movie? It is a, it's, it's one of those silly comedy movies. It's supposed to be like a, Kind of like liar liar type deal, or like a Jim Carrey movie. Okay. Um, I don't know the whole premise of it, but it's a big stoner movie, and it's actually the dude's favorite show. So, you know, I I vaguely remember the the title, but I've never haven't seen that one. I hadn't watched it either, uh, but I did just see that it was on Disney Plus, so we could watch it. At some point in time. Uh, Pickle says pea protein is what happens after you eat asparagus. <laughs> True. I know the the fragrance is not very pleasant. <laughs> okay. So this is looking like really wet cookie dough. Y'all can see that. Mm, yeah. I think it'll be all right. I'll just let this get hot. Um, get my brush ready. Get my bacon grease ready. And then that's ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, more of Injustice for All fan. 
that was the Metallica album that got me hooked. It was Injustice for All. And so my cousin's like three and a half, four years older than me. And of course I looked up to him. He was like, you know, my older brother kind of, we ran around together a lot and uh, we were playing uh, WrestleMania because he had the ring and all the little figures and the little thumb figures and all that. And so we were playing WrestleMania and I looked over and he had injustice for all poisons open up and say, ah, and I was like, what are these? And I got into those. And as a fifth grader, I had the little red realistic boom box that, uh, was exactly the same one that was on full house. The little red boom box they carried. Okay. It was the exact same one. I got it at Radio Shack. And I was in the fifth grade and I had those two, got those two albums. Um, the Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction had just came out. And uh, parents just don't understand from Twisted Sister. DJ Jazzy oh, Jeff and the Fresh oh, Prince. That's right. I was thinking the other one. Yeah. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. It was their. Uh, Parents just don't understand in Nightmare on My Street. Man, that was Nightmare. That was 1988. That was the year I graduated high school. How, how much older am I than you, dude? You're like a you're like a rock. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're saying fifth grade, you're like, man, I, I graduated. Yeah. Yeah, you're like a rock compared to me, dude. I graduated in 96. And you were born, or you were, I don't know, you were buying your first house in 96. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, you're right. It was, because it was December of 96. And Man, then, I was just guessing. I was just... We, we got it. They got the well and everything finished, and uh, the well was dug, and the water was completely finished in Thanksgiving in 96, and then Christmas, they let us start bringing stuff in in December of 96, when we actually started living there in January of 97. I was just full, man. I no, you, you hit the nail on the head. Dang. You know what? I think this was supposed to make two waffles. So I may have way too much in here. We'll scoop some out. Put it back in the bowl. That way you don't make a mess when you close it. We're already making a mess. <laughs> That's why Charlie keeps coming back is because I make a mess. Man would graduated in 95. 1995. <clears throat> Man, I'm older than all y'all. I should have graduated in 95, but I was held back in the first grade. Yep. I was held back. They thought it was, uh, I wasn't paying attention. Turned out I had eye, bad eyes. I had to get glasses. That, no, that was third grade. I don't know. Okay, well, this is turning out to be a mess. Whatever y'all do, don't do this. I'm making a mess. All right, let's just close it down. Let's just. Ah, oh, that would be 47 on Saturday. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. I'm 46. And I'm 54. I will be 47 in September. <sighs> it doesn't feel like it. Some days I feel like it. Uh, the millennium mess. You're right, buddy. You know, I, I mean, I look at it. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be good. It's all right. And then I, I get to playing with it. And we got to make it a mess. Probably should just leave that out. Okay, so that was that. That's what this disaster is going to be. So let's we'll see if I can see if I can close up this childproof zipper. It doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. 
Yeah, you shouldn't be messing with child zippers. No, no, no. Child proof, no. Charlie? He knows. Okay. So then the next, well, I, I don't want to get into the next one yet because I guess I got another one of these to make. I'm kind of curious about this one. The, the peanut butter. Anybody ever tried that? No, I never have. I know your wife tagged me in it or something and on, on the old FB, and that's where I was like, Charlie just turned 21. Can't wait to drink a kombucha. Really? Well, I mean, I know you like kombuchas, but... 21. Kombucha? I don't even know what the heck that is. Yeah, we had that. It's one of those drinks Cub had. Oh. <clears throat> okay. I, I that was when we know. tried the kimchi and all that stuff. Okay. We had a kombucha. Well, considering the name, I'm pretty sure I didn't like it. No. <laughs> Considering you try to hear. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if this, I don't know how this is going to be. It tastes kind of gritty. I say it looked gritty. It's got a good, like, taste to it, though. Kind of a nutty because of the, the vanilla. Well, maybe the heat will help break it down and it'll dissipate inside the... Yeah, it's got a good nutty flavor to it, though. So, who knows? Mm. So, what kind of cook you got going on this week? This week... Well, I guess tomorrow's Thursday, so... Right. Um, I don't have anything this weekend. Still and waiting to balloon. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, I don't have a cook this weekend. Um, we don't have a competition. Our competition's next weekend. So next weekend. Yeah, we got a uh, Florence. Oh, Florence. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to that one. It was like I'm not going to one for quite a while. Until but the next May. one you go to is what we're cooking in, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, that one. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to that one. Uh, Charlie bloomed early. Uh, Marie's Fabulous Fives. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well, too. Uh, we had a couple. Hey, everybody's kind of got things going on tonight, so it's just, it's just me and y'all. Good nutty flavor is also tempeh, non-meat recommend. You know, I I was looking that up. I was at the uh, old food line down the street there, and I was looking at a at that no, it was Publix, and I've tried that. It was it was some sort of soybean bacon, is what it was labeled as when I tried it, and it was like eating a handful of soybeans. Oh, uh, Terry's got. Two chickens and a pork butt. Yeah. Rock on, buddy. Rock on. I got a uh, I got a turkey to do. I was going to do it today, but I didn't get there. Got to do it tomorrow, though. Uh, Maria's doing good. Great. Great, great, great. Is that my brother, Steven? Steven, man. I was just listening to... Um, Ooh, that's a mess. Um, <laughs> Y'all didn't see that. Um, I was listening to a uh, Bigfoot and Beyond, and I know, right, whatever. But it was you know, the same guys, Cliff and Bobo, who did the um, the uh, Finding Bigfoot. And anyway, their guest was a lady from Trinidad and Tobago. So she was talking about her experience with Bigfoot down there. And – there was another lady who was like the co-host or guest co-host, and she was like from one of the tribes in that area. So she was like not the, one of the elders, but higher up in the ranking. And so she was talking about her story and all that stuff. So that's kind of neat. 
Tell them the history of the no, no, the uh, Bigfoot with her tribe and her people. Just her experience of running into them and oh, her personal experience. Personal experience. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that they were always told that you know don't don't uh, don't ever go into the woods if they come at you. Don't be don't show them fear. That kind of stuff. Uh, but that's, it was kind of interesting. I saw, I was like thinking of you today, man. I was like, I'm listening to that. And I was like, yeah, I wonder if Stevens caught a hold of Bigfoot while he was down there. Uh, got a ham to do figure Mojo Agave. Ooh, Ooh, Mojo ham. I'm thinking about that one. I'm, I just whenever I hear Mojo, I go straight to, to a Cubano. Yeah, I've got two bottles of the Mojo seasoning at the house, and one of them you know, I opened it up and I used it, and I used it on a pork butt. This was when, it, so how long ago it's been? It's whenever my son went to Hawaii with the high school with the band. Whenever they come back, that was in 1996. No, that was <laughs> when did he graduated. That was 19, 2019. And um, whenever they came back from Hawaii, they had a uh, – their, their luau had a, a lot of moho season and stuff there. And they wanted me to do barbecue for the band and use moho seasoning. So they went ahead and they bought a whole bunch of it. And I did, I don't know, 200 pounds, I think, 250 pounds for the band. And uh, the uh, citrus was so powerful in that seasoning. And, yeah. I mean, I didn't like it at all. But they did – I might as well go ahead just throw that away. I've had it been in there since 2019. <laughs> Mark that down, Charlie. Charlie, you didn't know this, but Charlie's keeping a list of all the stuff you don't like. And he's getting he's on like page 38. There's a few there's a few things I don't like. He's got a notebook binder full. <laughs> a no, like notebook, college rule, and he's on page 38. <laughs> Single spaced. This, but I didn't know what to expect with the seasoning, and I had no idea that it was going to be so so much citrus in it. But you know what? I'm, this, is, this is getting too. Don't do it. Tell me, don't do it. Don't do it. You know what I'm going to do. Well, that's let's not close your hand on the. Yeah, that is probably not the smart thing to do. Oh, nope. come on. No. Dang it. Shake it. Shake it. There we go. There, well, part of it fell. Yeah, there we go. Hey! There's one. You all can't see that. That's all bleached out. Yeah, it's all bleached out. All right. Anyway. Let's get this other one in here. Ew. Yeah. What you get, man? Jumping the gun. <laughs> the greediness did not dissipate into the the batter. <laughs> no, I didn't figure it would because of the. Um, I mean, it's almond flour right. first ingredient, and that's my problem with with keto pastries substitutes. That makes sense. Like anytime they, they're like, you know, bake with this and it's it's always almond flour and you're like, come on, man. Hook a brother up with something else. Yeah. I probably should have put the whole thing together as one. Oops. Oh, well. That's why that's why we do these shows, man. So you all learn what not to do. I'll get one right. I don't know when. Probably when I reshoot the video. Kind of like my spinach burgers, right? I reshot the video and dang if I didn't get one right. Um, yeah, the, those patties looked out. No, they came out a lot nicer than the ones in the pan and the biscuit pan. Yeah, let me go wash that out. And get it ready for your next one. No, I'm just gonna set aside. I got other. Okay. 
wife's home today. She can help me do. She can do dishes, or I mean, she can watch me do dishes. Uh, the Bud Files. How you doing, buddy? Uh, that's pretty cool. There are a lot of uh, folk tales, and there was another one. I don't. What I forget. What it was some demon trolls or something like that. She started talking about, but then she you can't like say their name, the real name, because they will. Like, they'll start coming to you or whatever. And I was like, I don't know. But I was like, okay. Uh, Give me their name. I don't know what it was. She wouldn't say. Because it uh, cause it would it would spook them. Like, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Scotty, what's going on, brother? Which I'm really excited about the new Beetlejuice coming out. Use the four. Man, I'll tell you what. Sometimes... Uh, can't make it. I can't make nothing slide across the table unless I push it. <laughs> I gotta push it. It, it doesn't work. Uh, on this episode, Rusty doesn't like Mojo season the century. <laughs> Viewer discretion advised. Yep. So now we're we've eliminated anything citrus. So guess what, Uncle Steve Shake? He does not care for at all. I gave you my bottle. He did, and I believe it is. Everybody's favorite. But anyway, it's all right. Works out. And you gave me your sweet and spicy R? Yep, yep. Uncle Steve's got a flavor for everybody. <clears throat> so, when this one gets done, I'll heat up the one or the other. You know what? Yeah. I think that first pancake would, uh, waffle would have come out and it cooked a little bit longer. It was still really, really moist on the inside, so the uh, moisture hadn't had a chance to evaporate. That made the bread really, really soft. So we let this one cook a little bit longer. It might have a better result. I doubt it. It's almond flour. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to be nice. Uh, you know, I was kind of after I started experimenting with substituting almond flour for in coconut flour and all that stuff for regular flour. My wife will tell you, she does not want to try any other keto biscuit. She wants biscuits. She does not want a keto biscuit or pastry. She's a bread girl. Give her a break. Uh, my youngest one came home the other day with a, uh, with a starter for sourdough. Great. So the wife figured out how to, you know, feed it and do all that stuff. And she made her first batch of sourdough bread yet. Well, she had it ready and I had to cook it. But so we did our first batch of sourdough. That's something I remember my mama, whenever I was a kid, you know, she had like, you know, book clubs and you know, things like that. And there was like a group of women get together. And I can remember them bringing Ziploc bags to the house. And they were trading out, and they called them starters, and they were trading them with each other and stuff. I can remember that. Trading starters? Mm, yeah. They were, somebody had like had a sour dose, somebody had something else, but they were giving each other Ziploc bags with a starter dose so they could make their own breads and stuff. There was like a little, like a, not a book club, it was a bread club, I guess. I can just remember them, you know, in the living room whenever I was a kid, and they all here's, had Ziploc here's, bags. Here's how bad I stink at making bread. I loaded everything up in a bread machine, and that didn't work. <laughs> when I when I went to flip it out, it was all a mess. It didn't make bread. It didn't make anything but a mess. Mm. Yes, like to the point where the wife was like, "We almost need to throw this away," and I was never allowed to touch the bread machine again. So anyway, that was enough of my disasters. Let's move on to the next one. So I don't know how much this is going to... Let's, let's try to make two. Let's try to make two. So it'll call for two eggs because it was... The original recipe is one egg and one tablespoon of peanut butter. So I probably should wait until this is done. But 
shoot. Man, I am terrible. It, it, I mean, I'm good at busting eggs, but not where I want them. I got that all over the place. Kids, kids, kids. They always say pop it into a separate bowl in case you get eggshell in there. Uh, okay, let me grab another. All right. Now I need two tablespoons of. Didn't I have a. Two tablespoons of peanut butter. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's drop one in. Okay. How was everybody's Easter? You had a pretty decent cook, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, had a lot of family together. Had, had a real good. Actually, my my brother surprised us. We got got to the family dinner. He brought in, and um, he said, "Rusty, he said I want you to taste this before anybody else, and I want you to see it before anybody else does." He smoked his first turkey. What? He brought a smoked turkey in, and I said, "No." Oh. I said, and "I said, what'd you use for it?" And he started telling me what he did to it. And I said, "How long did you cook it?" He said. This thing cooked for like 13 hours. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> and um, I said, what temperature? He said, I don't know. I just saw, I saw the smoke, and the, it was hot enough to make the wood smoke. So I figured that was hot enough. And I said, what temperature was it when you pulled it out? And he says, I don't know. I don't have a thermometer, but I figured 13 hours it had to be done. And um, I pulled it out. I bet you he cooked that thing at 190 degrees or something because. It was, was he using a Traeger or Pit Boss? No, he was using um, just an old gasser, just like the one you have here. Oh, okay. And um, he hasn't used it since my mama passed away. And uh, he just had a turkey in the freezer. He just wanted to try it. But yeah. luckily, whatever temperature he cooked at, it was so low that the, the meat and everything was still really, really moist and juicy inside. There was nothing got burnt, nothing got overcooked. Even the wing tips, which I thought I thought I thought for sure those were going to be charcoal, but no, they weren't. So oh, no, no, no. No, <laughs> but you got to keep it out of the danger zone for right when you're cooking it. You don't want it to sit in the danger zone. Oh yeah, but, but again, I you know, he was just saying you know, he he didn't have a thermometer, and all of a sudden I'm like. You know, I got everything in the world at the house. Yeah, I had a fellow that, uh, what's up, honey badger? Um, I had a fellow that was like that. He's like, oh, man, I, I cooked this and this and this. And he pulls stuff out and it's black as your phone. And you're like, oh, it's good. It's good and smoked. All right. Yeah, it's good and smoked. All right. <laughs> Doesn't mean you should be doing it. What temperature you pull it at? I don't know. I was like, what do you mean you don't know? Like, he just, he had no clue and still doesn't. I had to teach him. He'd been doing this for years. And I had to teach him how to use a, a thermometer, a meat thermometer. What do you mean I got to use one of those? Yeah, well, I uh, I know that that's definitely, his birthday's in July. So I'm definitely going to get him a, a, a thermometer or something. See, that one works a lot better. Yeah. It's also smaller and thicker. Okay, so I'm going to set this one aside and heat up a different one. Let's go with this one. So, Rusty, do you know who this one is? I know. Don't don't make fun of him today. Who this one? But this one what? Do you know who those are? That's Darth Vader, and that's Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah! Check it out, guys. 
All these years, he's finally got it right. Well, that's from the one of the first three movies. I, I know the the seventy, the late seventy, early eighty Star Wars. I know them Star Wars. All this new stuff that's out is ones I don't like. Uh, yeah, and and I, I don't know if anybody in here really, you know, in the chat really follows it, but I was watching the uh, Bad Batch today, and um, so most of y'all don't know, and that's fine. But um, the Bad Batch is a clone force that they were mutated, so they weren't just regular clones; that they had special abilities, and they were a force that they were a group of five, kind of like the A Team. Whenever something was wonky and they they sent these guys in on suicide missions and they'd always try, right? So they that's how they kind of became known. And uh, they've got their own little spinoff series. So I was watching that, and I mean, it's supposed to be ending soon, and it's a nice cliffhanger that it's ending on. But it ties in everything from Episode 3 up to, well... It would be, yeah, from three up to, uh, well, through nine. It's tying it all together. So it's kind of interesting. I know you're looking at me like, what's that got to do with Gilligan's Island? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. How does that help you make peanut butter pancakes? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, but that's that gives me something to talk about. I've never, I've never heard of that one. I know, and I know I've only got a couple people I can talk to about it because there's only a couple people that watch it that I know. Right. And a couple well, of them, my the, brother might know. The couple of them that do watch it, they they don't watch it like at the same time, so it's kind of. Mm. But anyway. Well, you saw my brother's house whenever we went and picked up that couch for you, and all the thousands of. Star Wars stuff he had in his living room. Yeah, I don't know if there was any fat left in that turkey. Was there any fat left in the turkey? Um, it, he had already. Put, it was all pulled and you no, know, in a pan. He already had it all pulled and everything. Probably stuck it and put a thing of gel, jello <laughs> in it. <laughs> what's what's that gelatin mix? They the, the, the helps it congeal. Oh, gelatin mix. Yeah. Wonder if Rusty could make a channel and cook, talk about what he doesn't like, and get success from rage people actually do. <laughs> you know, I, there was a guy I was watching last night called the Mudbrooker, and he started off his live last night with um, a video where a guy was cooking. This is crazy. This guy was, has his own channel and does his – Kind of how to TikTok shorts and all that stuff, right? This guy had a gallon jug of a gallon jug, and he filled it with chicken wings, and then filled it with olive oil seasonings, all kinds of stuff, right? So this big gallon jug full of stuff, and he stuck it in a pan of water, not like a pot. I mean, like a deep saucepan. Sets it in there. So only this much of it's in the water. Simmer it for five and a half hours. Well, then, supposedly five and a half hours later, takes it, opens the lid, pours it out on his tray, all beautiful and everything. Chicken looks perfectly deep fried and, and soaking wet because it was in the mood. But how did it get deep fried? I missed that part. <laughs> all right, here we go. looks awful liquidy. Well, I mean, it is mainly egg. I don't know about this one either. When I get home, I'll tell my wife she should never send you videos again. Well, fortunately for me, it had nothing to do with a cat. Don't tell her I said anything about her dang cat. <laughs> all right, we'll try that. All right, so that one's off. Yeah, we might be surprised. You never know. Might be, might be. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so there's that one. 
That one's cooking. The third one. Oh, yeah. Behind you. Okay, so the third one. Oh, let's see, where are we at? Um, rage bombing. <laughs> yeah. I'll be right back. When Star Wars was cool was the first three movies. Yeah. It's so I've gotten I've gotten to where I can turn seven on and I can turn nine on. Eight, I don't like it all. I've tried to watch it that multiple times to try to like it, and I just don't like it. They've got actually nine others already. We need to seriously talk about our friendship negotiation there. <laughs> <laughs> really? There's there's nine Star Wars movies now? Yes. Wow. And so eight's just hard for me. Nine I can get into, but I kind of have it on in the background when I'm doing other stuff. Um, remakes, uh, serial movies have gotten insane. They're coming out with Goonies 2 now. Yeah, Goonies 2, Beetlejuice 2. Yeah. Ghostbusters 3. <laughs> now that smells like burnt peanut butter. It doesn't smell like peanut butter cookie like I was hoping. Uh, I watched last night as well. The YouTuber switched the chicken. He had to have, man, because I was like, there's no way. That, I mean, kind of like what Mud was saying. You've got a jar, and it's this high in water. Up here is not going to get, even at five hours, it's not going to get cooked. But this guy had chicken wings piled in there, all kinds of oil and fragrances and, and seasonings and all kinds of shit. In, and set it in the water and cook it for five and a half hours. Not laying it down, not flipping it around. Not stirring it up or no, nothing. No, just Ooh. like this. Like he said a couple times, you had to flip it upside down. Before you put, but once you set it in the water, it's it's in yay high in a saucepan that you don't touch it. And I was like, no way. It's kind of like that other guy on TikTok that goes, what? No way. And then he goes to his toolbox and, and or whatever. Yeah. And tries to recreate it. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him. He's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, you sure you're going to make your own peanut butter? I didn't say I was making my own peanut butter. Did I? No. Oh, I know what you're talking about because you have a video on that, and I was going to do that like, I don't know, several months ago, months and months ago. And I did not do that because mm -hmm. I forgot. You can always go to Harris Teeter, get the peanuts and put it in there, and they all make peanut butter right there in front of you. Bring yep. it home. But I know what Charlie's talking about now because I forgot completely. So this other one, my man Mikey, great dude. Y'all know him. You y'all met Keto Mike. Well, he's he gave me this stuff. It's a protein powder called Devotion. And this is a sweet tater pie. And it comes with a recipe card that has protein pancakes on it. I'm going to try to make a protein waffle. And if it turns out like this one did, we could be in trouble. But hopefully it turns out like... Ooh, that one looks good. Wow. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going to, we're not going to jump the gun here. Maybe I'll wait on this one. Because kind of I mean, it's rising really good. Man. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe Teresa is on to something. Focus. Focus. All right, so let's put this protein powder in. And I'm not big on protein powders. My wife likes them. i just I'm not a big fan of them. I've never tried one. I've tried them. Um, we is that used something like you, you pour milk into it, make like protein milkshakes and stuff? Something similar, yeah. So back in the day, we used to do Slim Fast. And Slim Fast was kind of like a meal substitute protein right. powder drink thing. Yeah. But if you sprinkled it on top of your ice cream, 
it made it healthy, right? Yeah. Yep, diabetes didn't care. Oh, wait, I need the card. Okay, so I take one of these packets. Now I need two egg whites and a quarter cup of ground oats and a quarter cup of water. Are those ground oats? Well, they're what I got. They're quick oats. So they could be a complete disaster. Those aren't ground. Well, but they're going <laughs> to they're gonna work, by golly, because that's what I got. We're making oatmeal cookies. <laughs> it's not what it's supposed to be there, Rusty. Come on now. Uh, this is all about experimentation. What's Tom say? Play with your food. Put that in there. Now, remember the fun you had Sunday getting the egg whites and the yolk separated. Yes, and then and and so then the next day, I figured out a way. So I use the slottest. Here's the tip. This is the only thing that'll probably go right the whole video other than hitting start and saying hi to everybody. I use a slotted spoon. See that? Set it over top. Now I need two egg whites because I am terrible at this. Come on now. Come on. I need a little bigger hole, I think, huh? Well, this is like watching paint dry. Come on. I know you guys are like screaming at me, and it's okay. Ah, uh, anyway, y'all didn't see that. There's egg white in there. Y'all didn't see that. It's not what's supposed to happen. Can't lose track of time on this one. It's coming along pretty good. Okay. So that almost worked. If you pinch garlic clove, then you can actually pull the yolk out. Charlie, I don't know. I don't know about pinching no garlic clove. Let's try this again. There we go. I got a good crack on that one. That was my problem is I didn't get the good crack. I didn't get good crack. That cheap crack will get you every time. Yeah. So then I took it, moved it to the front, swooshed it around a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, there we go. There. You know, oh, you just got it just in time. There we go. Now I got that. Okay. Let's take. Ooh, that looks good. It does. Let's see if I can get this one out of here. It pulled in. The edges all pulled in around. It's lifting up really well. All right. That looks a whole lot better. I know, quit moving stuff around, but I got ideas, Rusty. I got ideas. I got ideas. I'm, I'm hitting them all, man. I know, he's like, you spend so much time. I'm interested in seeing how your oatmeal cookie comes out. This is what happens when I'm left unsupervised. And where was I at? What do I have left to get in? Uh, you just did the egg whites. Yeah, but I went completely out of work. So, need a little bit of floof, floof powder, L lifting agent. 
Mm. Okay, so that should be that. Now I got a mixer up. I can't remember what Tommy was making, but do you remember it called for two teaspoons of baking powder? He put in two tablespoons of baking soda. I and then he couldn't understand why it didn't work. Right. I, I can't remember what he was making, but I, I laughed so hard. You've never done a sanding cast iron video, have you? No. Um, taking an orbital sander, I've done it one time. And that was early, early, early on in my um, cast iron um, education. And I bought a 10 inch dual handle skillet. And I thought, well, let me put the orbital on there and just lightly go over it. And that worked. But there was a couple spots where I got too deep and it thinned out the cast, you know, it mm -hmm. made it smooth. And it never took seasoning right. It took a long time for it to actually take seasoning in that those areas. Um, so I've done that once. I I have taken like sandpaper and used my hand, and I put it on there lightly, just kind of like just to help get some of that real cruddy rust off. And but that's it. I don't like to get up in the like on a three notch. The heat ring to get in between the heat ring and stuff. I've done that. Um, let's see. Ron from Four Seasons has a video on how to remove egg whites. Yeah, there's there's plenty of ways to do it. I'm just uh, not that bright. Uh, yep. I'll leave that up there so everybody can kind of read that. It was, I mean, that was the beginning of his video. So then he was talking about um, other, some of these other viral videos that people are trying to do. And then they're like, oh, this works like, you know, like a charm. And there's like, no way if you can boil water that this is going to work. Like, right. you know that this isn't going to work. Like the lady that, that pulls out the, the aluminum pan to make her lasagna in and leaves the paper in it and the glue. <laughs> and then she dumps everything in there and then throws it in the oven. You just wasted all that. And that's what Mud was talking about was you just wasted all that food because you're not going to eat that. You're knowingly not going to serve that to your family that has hot glue and paper in the bottom of it. But you did it for the video. Uh, between your thumb and your forefinger and pull the yolk out. Hmm. Scotty, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm, 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 right now, I've got one good one and one that's okay out of the three. And we're working on the third. Yeah. I was really surprised that peanut butter one, it, it looks really good. And it smells good. Yeah, uh, Charlie, it's uh, the Mud Brooker. Uh, it was his live last night. Um, let's see. Ran naked through the woods or traffic. Charlie, I grew up in a cornfield, buddy. Um, well, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Pickles. Anything's possible. He's a keyboard warrior. It's kind of like like those wrestlers that used to. The more irritated they got, the more clothes came off. You remember those guys? It was a tag team, and they they come out and they'd be like in their t-shirts or their shirts and whatever. And then by the end of the thing, they're in their little tighties and their knee pads. Probably not. No, probably not. Maybe it wasn't wrestling. Maybe it was a different video. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's try this one. I was a really big wrestling fan when I was a kid until I found out it was all fake. And the reason I, the way I found out it was all fake is so funny. I was 14 years old, 
my very first job was with a company called Mark IV Security. And what my job was at the uh, Winthrop Coliseum right here in Rock Hill, they had all the uh, wrestling matches, Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard, Magnum TA, the Iron Sheik, you know, all those guys. And my job was to walk them from the locker room to their stage. They pop, you know, paraded around the stage showing off their belt, Ric Flair doing his robes and all that stuff. And then I was to take all their stuff and I took it back to their locker room and set it up where they were, uh, where they had their areas. And I got, mom and dad had to drop me off at work early one day. And I was at the, I was at there and sitting there watching all the guys sitting around the ring together, talking, just having a good old time and getting up in there and practicing their moves for their matches that night. And whenever I saw that, my heart broke and I never liked wrestling after that. I didn't care. Mankind was still my favorite, and Al Snow, because Al Snow was from Lima, which was about forty-five minutes north of Sydney, and so he was kind of like the hometown guy. Yeah, so Al Snow was my was one of my favorites. Mankind, you know Mick Foley, uh, he was one of my favorites, and um, the Undertaker. I liked Jake the Snake, but I, I hated liked, that python he had. Really? Oh, I hated that python. I like Tully Blanchard. I like Dusty Rhodes. Um, Dusty Rhodes was good. Oh man, this, my brother. Oh good. My brother was uh, working at um, Kmart. You know, way before it got, of course, you know, just, you know, out of business and all. But um, I was at home one day and uh, I got a phone call, and um, they said, "Hey, is Shane there?" I said, "No." I said. No, he's at work. Can I take a message? He said, yeah, this is Uncle Ivan. Tell him you know, that I was just returning his call. And um, no, he didn't say Uncle said He said, this is Ivan Koloff. And then I said, yeah, right. Click, and I hung up. <laughs> and come to find out, Ivan had held an uh, uh, autograph session at my brother's Kmart. And you know, my brother gave him all his information and stuff. Because he was going to go to Ivan's wrestling school, and he was calling my brother to get information and stuff to send him up for school. And I told Shane, I hung up on him. I didn't think, you know, Ivan Koloff would be calling our house. JYD, man, that was junkyard dog. Back in the day, like the early when I when I was a little tight, when I was they had the fun wrestlers. Oh yeah, JYD, the Iron Sheik, and um, Hogan. Were all my like those are the ones that got me into it. Man, I love me some JYD. He come down there with that big log chain around his neck. Ah. And uh, British Bulldog, I liked his because he had the bulldog. Right. Yep. Uh, let's see, Rusty, did you watch the Georgia Championship Wrestling? No, never heard of it. Didn't know Georgia had a championship wrestling team. You do know they wrestle in high school, right? They have a wrestling team in high school and college. I, I wrestled in high school. I don't know what you're talking about, Georgia. Well, that was like the backyard behind the dumpster stuff. You was behind the bleachers wrestling. Hey, that one. <laughs> I, I, I never heard of that. So, no. Um... Lower Michigan Adventures, how you doing? Uh, speaking of Michigan, I thought you didn't say that word. I don't, and but I I am because Polly Detmers. I've been watching him. He made his own, like he he learned how to weld and everything. Well, kind of spot weld, but he made his own pizza oven, and it looks pretty darn cool. Yeah, y'all check him out. Give him a little bit of love. But, uh, man, yeah, the old wrestling. Dude, I tried to watch wrestling the other night, and I just can't get into it. Yeah, I don't like the stuff that they do now. Yeah, the the uh, the Undertaker, he was always a favorite. And then you kind of had that power shift where the Undertaker was still there, and then it went into Stone Cold and then The Rock. Um, 
I was still a uh, the the Degeneration X guy. I liked watching those guys. Yeah, but wrestling. I mean, I thought it was so amazing until I saw them all hanging around with each other. No bullshit. I'm over that. Bull yes. crapping around yeah. the uh, stage and practicing their moves for that for the night. Yeah, and that that ruined it for me. Well, thank you, Lower LMA. Thank you. That was uh that was a fun fun project putting all them up. There's a few of them that still have the labels in them, uh, and there's a few that that don't. But most of them been used. Most of them I've used. The ones I haven't still have the label on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Rick Flair, Fabulous Freebirds, Dusty Rhodes was in Georgia Championship Wrestling, hosted by Gordon Sully. Uh, wrestling is not re- it's not anymore. No, it's it's all for the show. It's once it's all sports entertainment now. Once they got rid of um, the other two platforms. Um, Oh, it was AEW, WCW, WCW, ECW was it? ECW was the low one. Once they got, once the McMahons bought them out, it just wasn't the same. Um, you know, and as I'm getting older and seeing the the business progression, how you had the, your entry level, your ECW, and then. You got better and better, and then they pull you into the WCW, and then the WWF, and WWE, yeah. and stuff. And it took me a long time to realize there was a natural progression to get these you know, A-listers up there you know, and, and how they pulled them from the lower ranks. There was uh, many documentaries I was watching, you know, several different ones. And the one, they um, they were showing how they, were, they pulled out the table – for them to flip over the top rope onto right onto the ground. The guys pulled out the wrong table because they haven't cut. Mm-hmm. So they pulled out the wrong table and the guy actually had like went through a table. So when he, when they, they threw him down on there, it didn't bust. So the guy jumped off the top and had to slam him through it. And that was why it was because he pulled out the wrong table. Yeah, you, you got to sell the shot. You yeah. Can, you can't cut it short. Uh, uh, you used to like Jimmy Fly Snooker. Jimmy he's a, Super Fly Snooker. He just passed away not long ago, wasn't he? I don't remember. I haven't. I think it was. But, was, I, but I did. I, I thought Jimmy Super Fly Snooker was awesome. Watching him dance around and jump off the top ring ropes and fly. Yeah, around. wearing all the, uh, the cougar print. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. It's just SmackDown soap opera now. Yep. I don't know what she's doing. All right. Well, that one looks really good. So I'm going to get a different, uh, I'm going to get a different, uh, port here. Let's see. Because I want this one smells really good. And that's the sweet potato pie? Yeah. That's really solid, too. Well, that's hot out. See it? Out treasured home. How are you doing? That's really hot. Ouch. I'm just burning myself. It's all right. Up another one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're just sitting here talking about all kinds of stuff. Back in the day, the old wrestlers. Cub, what are you doing? Oh, hello. Whoa, whoa. Knocking stuff over. This one. It's just a caravan. Okay, so this batch made two big waffles. Yes, it did. That's cool. Cool. 
All right. We'll close this one down. Let's, let's pull this waffle out. Boy, I'm, all, I'm already out of room. Look at that. The two best ones. Pull that string for the light. This one? No, the light. This one? Yep. There it goes. Now you can see a little bit better. Can I turn it back on? Well, that's, that's how, they, that's how the, the chat's seeing me. Seeing the... Mm -hmm. And then this one was just too thin. The Falcon. The Falcon's just too thin. I was going to try it. Oh, you want to try it, huh? Yeah, but with Panther. Well, let me get a snappy snap first. Where did you take the Panther? Right here. Oh. Oh. Okay. Give a snap, snap. Yeah, because. I'll take a bite. That one looks really good. I don't want one of those. I want that one. What one? That one? This. Like oh. a little, I just want a little weed. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm going to fit this one on here. Probably like this. Well, just don't put it on there. Okay. Gotta get it on there. No, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. I've been doing accounting. I'm in accounting class. That doesn't sound like fun. It's it's not, but I'm 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 pretty good at it. I'm pretty good at it. It's just the numbers part. <laughs> I'm not good at. It. But understanding like where everything goes and like the journals and like stuff like that. On this side. That and then I'm I'm pretty okay with it. I was getting a shadow. Okay, our treasured home. Not going to try? Those look awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Remember the blue mini. What? I missed that one. He's, oh, yeah, yeah. The blue mini. I do remember him. He was a uh, short time. He was only in for a little while. I remember him. I don't remember that one. And I still have. I know we're, we're way over time. I still have on VHS. The actual recording of Raw when Owen Hart died. When he fell out of the uh, fell to the top cage. Yep. I I have that on VHS still upstairs in the closet. Do you really? Yep. And I have the the newspaper clipping. I remember that happening. Yep, and that was a crazy, crazy time. I mean, they still think it was a inside job. Anyway. Did you see that big thing? Us? Huh? Nothing. You didn't like that one? No, I didn't. Um, that one's real uh, gritty, like almond flowery. It is. It is. You tried it, so we need to try one of these other ones. Did I almost don't want to cut this one because it's so pretty. Did you see that um, Diddy... Just got um arrested because they think he did something to uh in Tupac's murder. They've been talking about that for a long time. But he just got arrested this morning. Oh really? I didn't mm -hmm. know they finally arrested him for it. Yeah, because they ha there was apparently new evidence. This ought to be enough to taste. All right, so this is the. You want to oh, try this one? No. This is peanut butter. Maybe I'll try this a little bit. All right, this is the peanut butter one. No. It's peanut butter. It is. And spongy. It's peanut butter and spongy. Some Nutella would be awesome. I'm just saying. All right, so this is the protein powder one.
Come. Mm -mm. Sweet potato protein powder. No. All right. Please tell me you told them already about your pancake disaster the other day. Now that's good. I really like this one. It's got a neutral sweet aftertaste, so. I'm getting a like pumpkin pie spice flavor into it. But it's definitely the best one out of because the Because of sweet potato pie. Same thing. One uses sweet potatoes and one uses pumpkin. Right. No. I can I can I can taste the, the spice, but that's that's the best one out of three. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> now, funny thing. I don't like sweet potatoes and, and I don't like pumpkin pie. But, <coughs> but this would be good with some it needs, it needs some syrup or some type of moisture on it, but yeah. But it's the best one out of the three. Yeah. So the protein one was definitely protein tastier. powder is a hit. Does this Facebook viral hack thing work? It does. Is it like a chocolate chip or a peanut butter cookie? No. no. Will I make it again? No. But it's okay. That, this mix, was about what I thought it was. So, there, there's recipes on how to make biscuits. So, I might try biscuits with it. That's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Make sure you save yeah. one for Tanya. Yeah. Yeah. Wife won't like that. But these taste pretty good. I'm going to eat them anyway, so I'm going to have to have a glass of water with it, though, because that one's pretty dry. <laughs> it's got a good, like, the vanilla in it tastes really good. All right, well, we've been on, and Tom's in my head going, watch your time, watch your time. So, hey, whatever. So... That's what I got. Three. I wouldn't say keto. I'd say low carb. Right. Look at that one. Three versions of a, dare I say, low carbish alternative to uh, waffles. So anyway, that's all I got. So y'all have a great week. Um, man, I don't know. I hope you all took up the challenge last week of finding one act of kindness. You know. So this week, call somebody you're thinking about. You know, I, I woke up the other morning and a friend of mine was on my, I hadn't talked to you in a while. Send him a message. Say, hey, what's up? Just thinking about you. Didn't hear back, but that's okay. No, I did a little bit later on, but they was busy and I knew they had a lot going on. So, you know, but uh, yeah, that's all I got. So hopefully uh, Mikey will be back next week and still thoughts and prayers with him and his family and Tom and his, and uh, the dude and his. Uh, any idea what you want to cook for next week? I have no idea. You got any ideas? Um, let's see. All right, we'll come up with something. Yeah, we'll have to come up with something. We'll come up with some Perfect weight loss waffles. Because <laughs> you, you ain't, ain't eating them. Eat them. <laughs> That's what he said, because you ain't eating yeah. them. Oh, man. Yeah, well, so, all right. Well, we will see you guys on the next one. And, uh, man, stay safe. And remember, two rules in cooking. Did you have fun? And did it taste good? Rock on. Y'all are awesome. Have a great week, everybody. Have a great week, guys. Bye.